how do I know if my hormones are off? That is a phenomenal question. Now, if you haven't been feeling like your usual self, you may have been asking this very question. If that's you, then you are in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to be answering that question. Plus, I'll be sharing with you a proven solution for getting them back in balance without using any medications. Let's dive on in. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Shockley, doctor of cause, chiropractic, board certified in sports medicine, and specialized in clinical nutrition. In this video, we're going to be going over the most common indicators of hormonal imbalance. There's far more to it than just fatigue and change in libido. Then we'll cover the most common mistake you're unknowingly making with trying to address this issue. And it's not your fault. This is what we have been led to believe um, in today's world. And finally, I will be sharing with you the behind closed door methods to balancing your hormones out effectively and easily. And it has nothing to do with dangerous hormone replacement therapies. Let's get started. All right. Before we get into what the solutions are, we've got to be able to determine if this is an actual issue that you might be dealing with. So I'm going to share with you the most common indicators of a hormone imbalance. Hormones control a lot of different functions in the body, so you can have a multitude of different symptoms. They can be related to like EMS or menopause types of symptoms for guys like low testosterone. That can also appear as low energy or fatigue. You may have issues with insomnia or some type of sleep problem. Weight gain is a huge symptom of a hormone imbalance, specifically right around the belly. Another one that people don't seem to realize could actually be a result of an underlying hormone imbalance is irritable bowel syndrome. Whether it's, you know, full-blown IBS or it's more digestive kind of troubles, whether it's gas and bloating, constipation, diarrhea, you know, any, all of them, that could be part of an underlying hormone challenge. Obviously, there's the low sex drive. Um, change in libido is generally a, a very telling sign of a hormonal imbalance. People can start experiencing anxiety as a result of hormonal of, of as a result of hormonal imbalances as well. And then something else that can change is your skin and your hair. Whether it's falling out or you're growing hair in really awkward places that normally you shouldn't be growing hair. You know, your skin is dry, your nails are brittle and, and peeling, cracking, or maybe they have ridges in them. Those are all potentially signs of underlying hormonal imbalances as well. Did you know that hormone imbalances could create so many different types of issues? Let me know your response in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And now we're going to get into the mistake you might be unknowingly making, and it's not your fault. It's part of how we've been taught. Ultimately. The way our standard of care works is if you have a hormone imbalance, you give the person hormones and they feel magically better. But that is treating a symptom, not necessarily getting to the root cause of why did you have hormone imbalances in the first place? You see, there's something important to know here. Your body robs Peter to pay Paul. Now, what in the world do I mean by that? What I mean is there's certain demands being placed on your body each and every day. And the organs have their requirements, your hair has its requirements, skin has its muscles, hormones, you name it. Every single system, every single tissue in the body has its own set of nutrient requirements. And ultimately what happens is, is if nutrient demands are not being satisfied in all areas of the body, there are certain tissues that the body will self-sacrifice in order to break down and basically free up nutrient assets to give to other tissues in the body that are more important for survival. So let me ask you a question to help illustrate this and provide some clarity. This is not for comfort. This is not for vanity. This is for survival. So if your body had to choose between your hair, skin, and nails, or let's say your liver, to break down in order to, you know, be healthy or at least try to live and function, what set of tissues do you think your body would break down? Your hair, skin, and nails, or your liver? If you chose your hair, skin, and nails, you are correct. Your body will break down your hair, skin, and nail to give nutrients to the liver if its needs are not being satisfied. So let's go through another example. What about, what do you think your body would break down first? Your muscles, your bones, cartilage, your connective tissue, or let's say your liver. If you said, Liver, while yes, we need our bones and our muscular system to carry us around and that's what protects everything, 
it is not as important as what the liver is. So your body will break down muscle. It will break down bone and connective tissue and cartilage to give nutrients to the liver if the liver's needs are not being met. And then this is the one that trips everybody up. What do you think your body would sacrifice first? Your hormones or your liver? Most everybody says the liver. And that's because we've been like programmed to think that way. But ultimately your body will break down your hormones again to free up nutrients to give to the liver or any of the other organs for that matter. Because it's not just all about the liver. It's about the organ systems. If the organ systems needs are not being met, your body will break down your hair, skin, and nails, your muscles, bone, connective tissue, cartilage, and your hormones in order to reprioritize those nutrients to the organs so that you can survive. That's kind of crazy. And ultimately, what does that mean? That means any hormone problem is generally the result of a different problem in the system. It's not the primary cause. So if all we're ever doing is fixing hormone imbalances by giving you more hormones, which yes, you feel amazing when you get your hormones back at a normal level, whether it's through a medication or it's through, you know, gels or creams or it doesn't matter. When you take hormones that are out of balance and you feel like crud and you give somebody hormones again, all of a sudden they feel way better. But did that fix the actual problem? No. And in fact, it may have just masked the underlying issue that was there that the hormones were trying to alert you to. But again, it's not your fault because this is how medicine works. And the challenge with how the standard of care works right now in the United States is that more and more they have compartmentalized medicine. Back in the day, you could go to a primary care doc and you could pretty much get any test done, any procedure done. Well, not surgeries, right? But you could have so much of your health evaluated just by going to your primary care doc. Now your primary care doc essentially care, takes care of very few things and then refers you to whatever specialist you're supposed to see. So if you have hormone issues, you go see the endocrinologist. Unless it's female stuff, then you need to go see your OBGYN. If it's a heart problem, you go see the cardiologist. If it's immune issues, you see the immunologist. If it's a joint problem, you see the rheumatologist, or maybe it's the orthopedist, depending. They've compartmentalized. And unfortunately, with how the standard of care is organized, each specialty has to stay in its own lane. They're not really allowed to just look at you as a whole. So ultimately, what that means is the care in the standard of care, the traditional medicine in our healthcare system here in America, is always going to be symptom based. What's the problem with that? The problem with symptom based care is it doesn't get to the root cause. It's like seeing a ceiling that has a stain on it. Symptom based care is simply taking paint and painting over the stain. It looks better, must be gone, must be resolved. Yeah, unfortunately, no. And ultimately, what that does is it opens up the door for a much bigger problem to come down, you know, the lane. When you treat the cause, That's when you pull back the layers of the ceiling and you actually figure out where the leak is that created the stain in the first place. That's what gives you resolution and keeps you from having some more traumatic or crisis event down the road. So hormone imbalances may just be the sign of some bigger issue going on within the system. Kind of crazy, right? But it's true. You've got to look at you as a whole in order to get full resolution. If you take care of the underlying cause of the issue, your hormones will balance themselves on their own. That makes sense, right? Now, before I get into the behind closed doors method for effectively balancing your hormones back out, I just want to take a moment to remind you to click that subscribe button right there below my video and turn those notifications on. That way you are certain to never miss a future episode. I am regularly producing content around balancing hormones and female issues, you know, gut problems, health problems, everything related to helping you be able to take back control of your health so that you can live a more meaningful, healthy life, which I think is what we deserve and are capable of. Ultimately, I help you achieve what I like to call total body mastery. So again, just click that subscribe button right below this video, turn the notifications on, and I will see you on future episodes, which is awesome. You're perfect. Here we go. What is the behind closed doors method for safely, naturally bringing hormones back into balance. It's treating the cause. And how do we do that? We have to be able to detect where the cause of the problem is. Ultimately, what that means is we have to do complete whole body health testing. We're not testing, then we're guessing. 
Now, I'm not going to get into the, all the nitty gritty details about all of like proper testing. What does that mean? And how do you look at results and interpret them differently than what traditional medicine is? Because that would take a lot more time. And I want to be mindful of your time. But what I would love to do is to invite you to my health challenge. That is where I lay it all out on the table. I share with you the exact framework I use with my patients to be able to detect what the cause or causes are of their hormone imbalances and understand how they got to that point, which when you understand and appreciate the why behind something and you've detected what the cause is, that is when you can create a custom approach, a roadmap for moving forward and getting full resolution of that issue so you never have to fall victim to it again. So all you have to do, guys, you're personally invited, just go down to that description right below this video, click on it so it expands. Scroll down until you see five day health challenge. And below that description, there will be a link. Click that link that will get you registered and you can start right away. It honestly doesn't take five full days to get through. I just chunked it out into five different videos to explain each step of this process that I use. It is the answer to everything that I do within my, my office, within my clinic, with all my patients near and far that I help from a telehealth standpoint. And it will help you really determine why are your hormones in balance and what is the underlying cause of that problem so that you can know exactly how to have full resolution and not ever have to deal with them again. I appreciate you greatly. Remember to click that link down below in the description. And I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. God bless.